You see that documentary playing back there? That's called Initial Grooves. It's a 2016 documentary on YouTube. Anybody can watch it. But it really got me to thinking about a really controversial topic, and that is how much is too much when it comes to record collecting. Welcome to Sixes Overdrive 45 RPM edition, which means we'll be talking about vinyl and audio, all things audio, instead of talking about motorcycles and pellet smokers today. So, if that's what you're into, let's get it going. So my initial thoughts and where I'm coming from, I'm just going to put it out there for you. We're going to get this out of the way right away. I'd love you guys to comment if you don't agree with me or if you do agree with me, that's cool too. But I wanted to get where I'm coming from. I'm just getting back into record collecting and uh, matter of fact, only since this Christmas of 2020. So 2021 is kind of my intro into record collecting again. I had tons of records when I was a kid, but of course... They all went away because my parents sold them in a grad sale on me and they were gone. Not that I would have used them anyway, I was well into CDs by then, but I probably had 100 to 150 records that I listened to regularly that were now gone. So I also wanted to put out there that I actually like to listen to records. I'm not what you call a collector or a hobbyist. I'm not somebody who will go out and spend $100 on a record hoping that it'll increase to $150 or crate dig for something for $3 that I have no idea what it is and then try to sell it later for something more or put it into my collection just because it's rare. That's not me. I buy my records to listen to. That's not to say that I'm against you guys that do collect records or do resell records or find rare, rare things and that's what you get a kick out of. I'm not here to say that you're wrong and I'm right or anything like that, but at least you get the feeling of where I'm coming from. So first off, I'd like to hear from you guys. I'd like to hear what your idea of too much is or what your ideas of people collecting or people not collecting or people not aware of what they're doing and they're wrecking their records. Put your comments down below, start a little conversation with everybody. I'd be more than happy to get back to you and I almost do. I think I, I think I reply to everybody who ever puts in a comment to me. So if you wanted to discuss this further, by all means, put your comments down below. I won't always agree with you, but at least I'll comment back. So as I said before, this can be easily dropped into two categories, which would be collectors and listeners. And now the paths cross a little bit here and there, right? Because you're going to have some people that just love listening to music, but they also like collecting it. Or they like to collect from their childhood memories and they just want that to be pristine. And to menace. You removed it from its original packaging. <gasps> no! It's no longer a collectible! They never listen to the vinyl. They're more than happy just streaming it and collecting the albums and putting them in sleeves and uh, cataloging them on Discogs. That's okay, but there's generally the two different rules. People who really like to just listen to the vinyl they got, it gives them a nostalgic feeling, uh, they like the way vinyl sounds over everything, or people that like to preserve and collect and resell, and uh, you know, who am I to say what's right or wrong? You're talking to the wrong guy if you're gonna give an opinion of right and wrong and who's doing what. I mean, they're just records. It's not like we're solving world hunger or something here. So here's what I say, for me, being more of the listener and collecting something that I had in my past, these are some of the rules that I do so that my record collection doesn't get too high. Because what I notice about a lot of people is they collect and collect and collect and pretty soon they're collecting so much that they don't even have time to listen to the music. And that listening experience is kind of what I think listening to records is all about, is just sitting down, looking at the album artwork, listening to what the artist thought was great from start to finish and then continuing on your day. But that half an hour to an hour that you get to spend just listening to somebody else's creation, I think that's what music is all about. And if you can't do that, in my opinion, and you're a listener and you're starting to get too much because you're going through bins and it's just getting way too much, then maybe you need to dial it down. Here are some of the rules I use for collecting records. Now, if you can't follow these rules, it's probably because you have too many records. First of all is budget. I set a budget. 
a monthly budget and it usually only allows me to buy one full-size $44. So basically I try to stay under $50 for my record collection every month and usually I try to half that. But nowadays with albums and the prices, the way they're skyrocketing, I can't get a double album for less than $45 Canadian. So I have to set it at that bar and that's the way I generally run. Now, if I'm gonna pay my whole budget on one album, it better be a good album. It better not be a one hit wonder or something like that. That I can go bin digging for. But if I want to get into an album and I want the album that I'm gonna own and I'm gonna spend somewhere between 30 and $50 on an album, it better be a good album. And when I get my albums home, let's say I bought two albums, I will make a point before going out to buy any more records that I have to listen to the whole album and I have to categorize it and put it in its plastic sleeves and then sort it alphabetically. That's the way I do it. I won't go out even if I haven't reached my budget. If I went crate digging and I only spent say 20 out of my $50 budget, no problem. I've got four records. I listen to those four records before I go crate digging or whatever again. Now there's obviously some exceptions, but it's a good rule to have. It lets you listen to everything you have and it also lets you gauge the quality of everything you have because if there's any skips or warps or anything that's damaged on the record, you can find it at that time. This is especially true with new records. You hate to not listen to it for four months, find out it's warped or that the center hole's off and then you can't take the record back because you've had it too long. Again, I can see if you're crate diving and you end up with 50 records to take home and some of them are one hit wonders and stuff like that. That's what I usually find in my record collection is that I'm buying the used records for two or three bucks that have one song that I used to love as a kid. Those ones, I tend not to be so fussy on the listen to the whole album type uh, philosophy. Because let's face it, you can get six albums at a time and then what, you can't go shopping for two weeks because you don't have the time to listen to them? <laughs> not gonna happen. So those are just some of the tips that I have to keep you on the budget, keep you able to listen to your music. And again, if you're a collector, this might not be for you. If you're somebody who doesn't like listening to their music, c'est la vie. I'm not gonna say there's anything wrong with that, but to me, in a record collection, I find even when I've had CDs and all that, I think 500 is the point where you can regularly listen to your music. I don't think a person has that much more time for something else. I think that's when it starts to divide into the category of I'm now a hobbyist. I'm now just getting these albums just for memory's sake and stuff like that. 500 albums, you're going to have a hard time sitting down. That's basically, what, 400 hours that you're going to have to sit down and listen to all these records. And I like to listen to my records a bit, not just once. I'll go through and I'll hit my discogs. They've got a little shuffle feature and I'll pick out the band that I like and then I'll sit and I'll listen and I'll read and I'll take my half an hour to an hour and just enjoy what life has to offer. So that's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say 500, but again, tell me down below what you think. What do you think is your cutoff? I know a lot of you guys have long gone past 500 records, so you're obviously going to disagree with me, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on it and hear if you still listen to anything past 500 records. The other thing I really find is collecting is really doing two things to the market. Some people get really mad about this subject. The people who collect are driving prices way up because they're asking too much for this and it's causing, uh, you know, you go to a used a used bookstore or a used store and they've got a record section in there and you know you'll see thriller and it's way overpriced like you should be able to you look on discogs the thing's two dollars and then they've got it priced for 25 dollars because it's popular you know so the collecting thing drives up prices i used to own a comic book shop a long time ago and the same thing happened back then this is way back in the 90s and what happened was all the collectors were just driving up the prices of everything. And people would get so mad because a guy would come in, there'd be a number one comic book. I remember Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane came up. And uh, these guys had all pre-ordered it, pre-booked it. They were ordering like hundreds of this copy before they even saw it or anything. And nobody else could buy it. And that's what's happening in records now today. So I can see how you're a little bit frustrated, but also remember because of those collectors that 
you're getting more records out. More artists are doing reissues and stuff so that you can get the albums. Yes, they are going up in price, but because the collectors are there, it's going to raise the price of what you have as well. So your collection is going to go up in value as well. So you got to see the good and bad and everything. Now, will those prices continue to rise? If it's anything like the comic and card collecting back in the 90s? No, it's not. Right now, there's a bunch of millennials and uh, just general people are getting back into vinyl, but it's not going to last forever because vinyl is inconvenient. It's all about the time and process with it. It's an archaic process, but it's only for a certain amount of people. Collectors are their own breed. They always have been. Uh, true collectors are going to stick around forever, but the guys that are on the fringe and get into it and then realize they don't really want to do that or they move on to the next best collecting thing, they're going to drop off. So we're probably at the peak right now. So if you got albums and stuff that you want to sell, now's the time to get them at high prices because I think from my experience in other collecting fields, we're at the peak. We're pretty close. We might have another year to two years, but I think right now we're pretty close to the peak. So that's about all I have to say about that. Remember to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Guys, this is Sixes Overdrive, and I'm out of here. Bye-bye.